Okay, we're back. We're back with a new adventure. It's going to be bigger and better than the last one, and it's going to go longer. Yep, there's the key. That's where I'm going to be hiding, because the wife, better known as the Kraken, is going to be coming with us. There's going to be food. There's going to be me waxing lyrical, and it's going to be cold. What else is on your mind, Charlie? Oh, I put in my uh, resignation from my job yesterday. Okay, good morning, Charlie. Good morning. Sabah al here. Sabah al Noor. Okay, today's my last day. I'm getting dressed. I'm ready to go out and meet the new day, which is the last day that I'll be employed at Babco. Uh, that's the uh, refinery of Bahrain. And uh, this will be the end of 37 years of working. So, Unfortunately, I'm married, so really I've got a lifetime of work look, to look forward to and a very harsh boss <laughs> and uh, daily performance reviews. But, you know, the last sort of paid employment I should be doing should be today. Never say never, I may end up back at work, but the plan is not to. It's bittersweet today. I'm gonna miss everybody I work with. I'm scared shitless about retiring. But you know, once more under the breach, uh, and uh, a coward dies a thousand deaths, a brave man dies but one. We look uncomfortable. It's probably a bit of a squishy chair. Yes, normally I wouldn't be sitting here. I'd be sitting on the couch, complaining bitterly about having to go to work. And PJ would be lying in bed, and all you'd hear is the gentle tones of her snoring and farting from the other room. <laughs> oh, bollocks. You know, it's, it's the lullaby that she always has while she's sleeping. And what have you got beside you? I've got a cup of tea, which Peter is going to make it sound like this is a normal turn of events. But obviously I'm being specially rewarded because it's the last day. Because, <laughs> you know, this is closest to the miracle you'll ever see. Oh that my God. shoes are laid out and I've got a cup of tea before I'm ready to go to work. This truly means that miracles happen. Try havoc and let's slip the dogs of war. Bye, love. Here we've got Bahrain's new airport. It's beautiful, I'm gonna miss it. But let me tell you, I'm happy to be getting out of it. This is a bit of a secret, but while I was in the Middle East, I grew a moustache, and every man looks better with a moustache. But PJ didn't like it. So she kind of promised me that when we moved to Europe, I'd shave off my moustache. Uh, I started doing it, but of course it has to be filmed. Okay, so I'm just shaving off my moustache for the first time in like three years. Like I grew it when I went to the Middle East, and now I'm getting rid of it. Okay, under protest, but you have to do what you have to do. We arrived at Lisbon and picked up the bikes. I was happy to be back with Vlad the Impala. Charlie, hello. Okay, g'day, hello, how are we? Well, this is a different type of adventure. We're relocating to Portugal and part of the process we have to get an address. So we're out looking. I don't want to stay in Lisbon or Porto. I'm not really, the two, they're not good for bicycle riding. That's my opinion. So we went to, Coinbria last night and that was really nice but again full of young people it's a university town and it's quite hilly we rode up to the decathlon and uh, the things that we need is it has to be on a railway line so the next thing we did was caught the train from Colombia down to the coast and we went to this beautiful coastal area which normally I don't really like because you know winter and summer you get a different but this seems really lovely and the train came here it was nice and easy and um, we're going to look at a couple of apartments maybe not today because it's a sunday but they're 320 euro for the month but definitely i can live here this is really nice uh, i love the beach and it's flat and there's a lot of bike paths and uh, there's a train so it's got everything we need 
It's really beautiful through the uh, figure of defies. You can see the yacht club. I love yachts and I'm going to get into the sailing when we're there. Okay, this film is being shot in order of importance. So it goes PJ's coffee, her bike, my bike, and then lastly me. The foreshore has got a bike path that goes the entire length of it. So we haven't been to the end yet, but it goes at least five kilometers. It's lovely. We've come into a bit of a problem because I'm a fat bastard, you know, which I'm not upset about, but still there's some consequences. I've broken my back wheel, two of the spokes on my back wheel, which makes it feel a bit uncertain when I'm riding. So we're trying to get them replaced, but everybody just wants, everybody's just really into selling new bikes and nobody really wants to replace spokes. And I don't have my tools with me to do it myself and they won't let me use their workshops to do it. He's got a terrible solution. So really my solution is PJ is a spelt little thing. She weighs like 60 kilos to my like 135. So I'm going to swap wheels because the bikes are identical. So like the wheels are identical. So I'm just going to swap wheels. I'm thrilled. Um, the, the wheel's still true because they're, you know, 36 spoke wheels, or I think they're actually 28 spoke wheels. So yeah, the wheel's still true. It's just, a, it, it's not, it's compromised. And I think because I weigh so much, it would make more sense for me to swap my wheel with hers. And, you know, if she has an accident, well, that's, you know, terrible, terrible, terrible. <laughs> okay. So now we're off to the real estate. We're going to see if we can have a look uh, through a couple of places. Figure of the Foz is pretty special. So where are we going to stay? We definitely want to stay near the beach. But there is beautiful places just inland, you know, very, got lots of flowers and pretty stuff. Hi, good day, hello, how are we? Okay, so today we're going to get back on the road again. So uh, I retired on the 26th. It, today's the first, remembering that it's, you know, last month was February, so it's been like three days, and they've been a busy three days. So we got to um, Lisbon, we got our bikes from storage, we put some stuff into storage because PJ's a pack rabbit and she just brings lots and lots of stuff. Okay, then we've come up to Coinbra, and we looked around Coinbra, thinking about a base camp there, but it, it's it's a university town, so everything's sort of pushed towards, you know, really tiny bed sits, which you know it's fine, but it's not a very pretty town either, outside of the historic centre. So then we went to a nearby beach town called Figura de Foz, and I really liked it, like beautiful beach and. It's very walkable, rideable. It's got a cinema, which is very important for me. Um, and we rented the cheapest place for rent in the whole town. And uh, it's about 100 metres from the beach. It's a little tiny two bedroom unit. It's on a ground floor. It's got a secure area to lock our bikes. And it was fully furnished. And it's about 320 euros a month. While well, we're waiting for them to hear back that they'll accept, there's a bit of you know, they really want to rent to Portuguese people because it makes it easy, but we just said we'd pay six months in advance. And uh, the beach is lovely. So today we're back on the bike and we're going to ride, there was, some, there was some discussion this morning whether we should ride 62 kilometres or 40 kilometres. And being that there's a big hill in the middle of it and we haven't been on the bikes, I conceded to PJ's uh, request for the 40 kilometer and she's done this ride before so I should listen to her and she's saying where we're staying tonight is really beautiful so and she told me the name of the place but I've forgotten <laughs> Praia de Mira Praia de Mira so it's back on the road again it's been about a month since we've been on the bikes so and oh one interesting fact is my bike there seems to be some failure of some spokes at the back, which we tried to get fixed, but we just can't seem to get them fixed. Like everybody nowadays just wants to replace, you know, there's not a really repair. You take it to a bike repair shop and they say, oh, you know, we don't do that. And you go, well, you're a bike repair shop. How can you not replace spokes? Oh, we don't even have the spokes, so you can do it. And so anyway, 
we've got a couple of broken spokes. Hopefully that won't be an issue. Um, and if it is, I, I, I did say we should swap wheels, but PJ's like, no, no. My bike's so beautiful and your bike has got broken spokes. I don't want your broken spokes, even though I weigh less half of what you do, you know. So anyway, um, that's about it. Okay, so. It's raining. And it's just started to rain. So this will be our first day riding in the rain, which I've got to tell you, I prefer not to experience, you know, like, but we have to get back on the bikes. Have to get back on the bikes. And it's the first and it's a good day to get back on the bikes. Okay, we're on our way out. We're going to hit the hill straight away. The hill was a bit of an over-exaggeration by PJ, and the rest of the way is flat. There's some interesting buildings and interesting sort of landscapes, uh, but it's generally an easy ride. The apartment's really nice. This is just across the road from the lagoon and it's beautiful, it's a big apartment, it's like 32 euros and very good value and they stored our bikes. Okay we have one hour and 30 minutes or less to get 26 kilometers to catch a ferry, if we miss it we've got a four hour wait so we have to hurry. Okay, we arrived and, um, you know, it was, it was a good slog. It was 28 kilometres or 26 kilometres, I'm not quite sure. And we got here with 10 minutes to spare. The boat's just turning up. There's a line of people ready to go on. PJ's here, she's very grumpy. She just got mad at me. And uh, she's saying that wasn't fun. You want to say anything? No need to rush. We could have got the later ferry. That was in four hours. So anyway, I'm glad we made it. I, I had a great time. Okay, this is me busily trying to make up with PJ on the romantic ferry ride. The world's slowest ferry. So I've had a coffee and I'm in a better humour now. And I think Charlie's starting to see why I'm quite fond of Portugal. I don't know if I'm completely won over to Portugal, but yeah, it's getting nice. And uh, the road is dead flat. Very quiet. What do you think, Charlie? Oh, it's really nice. It would be lovely on a day where the sun is out. Yeah. We've ridden about 60 kilometers so far, so PJ's been amazing. Amazing. Really? Amazing. After her little blow up when we were catching the ferry, she's just been powering on. This has been amazing. Thank you, my love. Oh, look at this. And this is the path we've got to go to continue. And we're almost at... Espino. Kebabs. <laughs> yeah, we're going back to the kebab store, the one that we said should get Michelin stars. Yes. And PJ's like saying, you can't have too many. And I'm going like, you watch me. I've already decided to get two lots of kebabs. And as you can see, I'm successful. <laughs> Hey, there's lots of these bike paths in Portugal that run along the beach. They're really lovely. So this is dead flat all the way into Porto, but you've got to watch out because the wind comes from the north and it was quite hard riding, even though it's dead flat. Yeah, 
it, we were really happy when we turned the corner and started riding up the Douro River. I'm not really sure if I like these wooden bikes. It seems like they're quite bulky, but surprisingly they don't weigh that much. They only weigh like 14 and a half kilos. This time in um, Puerto, we had a guy show us around for like six hours and he showed us quite a lot of stuff. He put up with the Kraken, but he really liked me. We're experimenting with the couch surfing platform as a way of meeting people, not for accommodation. And our first experience is really great. He was so kind. We went to an area called the Arts District and there was lots of cool shops. It was really funky. Again, I, I just slotted in there. But they kept on like asking PJ to leave. <laughs> G'day, hello, how are we? Thanks for joining us on this adventure. It, it hasn't been much of an adventure, but you know, we've come to Portugal in this episode. We've explored a couple of places and we've probably found our, our base camp. We're still waiting back from the, um, from the real estate to say whether we've got it or not. Thanks to all the Australians that came before us that have given Australians a bad name, like all the Australians, all the real estate and the people we hire off have these horror stories of Australians that have come and stayed and left, you know, with bad feelings behind them. What do they do, Charlie? They seem to trash the place and have big parties and barbecues and things like that, which, you know, of course we would never do, really. Um, so what else? So we've been now three days, or two days fully static in Porto. We've been explored Porto. We met a guy who took us on like a six hour walking tour, which was really cool. And it was really great to get a local's view of Porto and figure out the differences and get some of the history. One of the differences is we couldn't understand why there's so many ruined houses around, but he just couldn't understand why anybody want to live in a terrace house in the middle of town where you couldn't have a car. He just kept on going round and round about this fact that you can't get cars in and they're very small and who'd want to live in the middle of town? Which, of course, you know, as Australians, we're thinking, wow. We're thinking about real estate in Sydney. <laughs> yeah, we're thinking about real estate in Sydney and, you know, Spring Hill and Red Hill and um, in Brisbane. So anyway, we also got my bike fixed, which was another reason why we stayed static for a couple of days. Now, I had a couple of broken spokes, which I was a bit embarrassed about because, you know, I was thinking, well, you're pretty big, <laughs> you know, I'm breaking spokes on the bike. So we took it to him and it seemed to take a little while to get fixed. And we, I didn't quite understand why, but what he said was, and he took photos and everything, all the bearings in the rear wheel had collapsed and the axle had broken in half on the rear wheel. So we had to re-restring re the whole bike. So anyway, it was good, it only cost 50 euros. And the bike seems to be like, you know, cause I used to think the bike was somehow broken because even when I was going downhill I'd have to pedal or the bike would just stop. Well, now it seems to be rolling a lot more easy. I'm yeah. sure when I bought the bike, it was in perfect order but I'm a heavy guy and, you know, like I test things, you know, chairs tend to collapse on me and now the rear wheel of a bicycle is just about given up. But it, stirl it was sterling because it, it, you know, I must have ridden it for like five or six hundred kilometres like that and it still was going strong. So the bike was very resilient, even when put to the test. This unit's been fantastic. It's right next to the Lewis Bridge. And it's been a real, PJ will put the link to it. It's like 56 euros a night and it's, it's just a beautiful unit. And it's so close to the bridge and all the attractions of Porto, literally a hundred yards from the bridge, no, no more. And the Metro is right outside. It's very quiet. It's a real oasis in the middle of the city. 
So anyway, this is the end of the first episode. From here, we're going to head up the coast. And if the real estate agent ever gets back to us and convinces the owner to rent to Australians, bad, bad Australians, mm -hmm. you know, we'll catch a train down and sign all the paperwork, pick up the key and things like that. And we'll show you around the unit. And the unit is definitely not flash, but it's very close to the beach, which is very attractive to both of us. Okay, so see you in the next episode. Please subscribe and hit the like button. PJ tells me to say that. Okay, bye. This is the make or break phone call. Either they've done it or... I'm just your ghost if we're not undressed